Welcome to Next Lab's expert Q&A series. This series was designed to inform you of relevant cybersecurity topics via expert knowledge. In this episode, our guest Somya Narayanan Dina Jalan will cover how ZTA can be strengthened with ABAC. Somya Narayanan Dina Dalan is a senior manager in Deloitte's Risk Advisory Group. Now, Somya will introduce himself before we move into the Q&A. My name is Somya Narayanan Dina Dalan. I'm a senior manager out of our, uh, Deloitte German practice. Uh, I have around uh, 16 years of experience in identity and access management. Uh, my focus area has been predominantly on uh, my AM and then on application security and then authorizations and access management all along. Now, let's move into the Q&A. Why do we have the recent paradigm shift to CTA? The paradigm shift we are seeing towards Zero Trust is caused by two factors. Uh, the first being that the interaction point with customers and partner ecosystem has expanded dramatically. Of course, as this has in, uh, increased the threat uh, landscape and uh, companies now need to reevaluate their uh, network and access control models and it's no longer sufficient to secure the data uh, in this dynamic environment. And the second factor is caused by the migration to cloud, uh, this resulting in the removal of traditional network boundaries. And of course, this is coupled with the increased user population, the number of devices, and then the whole uh, need to access data from anywhere. And all of this has led to an explosion of access points and then um, kind of cross-boundary traffic. And again, traditional network as well as access controls is no longer sufficient across. So that's, that's what we see as the recent uh, paradigm shift for Zero Trust. How does Zero Trust impact authentication and authorization? The lack of this um, true security parameter uh, means that the users cannot actually trust the internal connections in their networks. And uh, of, because of this, Zero Trust fundamentally requires each access request to be validated uh, based on the context, subject, as well as on the resource being accessed. Uh, Zero Trust simply will not work without a trustworthy identity. Uh, that means that the authentication of the identity must be always on and reliable. And then, of course, as we need stronger authentication methods like multi-factor authentication. Furthermore, NIST recommends that each interaction to be validated with risk-based authentication. So authentication becomes significant. Uh, and beyond risk-based authentication, uh, Zero Trust also requires authorization models to be real-time and dynamic. Uh, this takes us to the concept of attribute-based access control or ABAC. Uh, which provides fine-grained access models uh, coupled with uh, dynamic authorizations uh, to evaluate the access policies based on uh, attributes and uh, determine this access in real time. Um, so Zero Trust has actually significantly modified authentication and authorization the way we perceive them in a traditional model. How can ABAC and dynamic authorization technologies strengthen Zero Trust? So, as opposed to the single validation uh, to enter a network in a kind of network-based access control model, Zero Trust, as I pointed out, requires each request to be validated. And in order to be able to do this, we need an authorization engine that needs to operate uh, dynamically uh, based on the attributes of the subject, as well as understand what resource attributes they are accessing. And it also should need to consider the environmental factor. Traditional uh, access control models and technologies, uh, they tend to be role-based, they are very static in nature, and they are not able to scale the demand of, of change. Of course, as organizations also face an explosion of access policies when they use these uh, old uh, role-based access models. And of course, as it becomes more complex to manage, and then it is uh, error-prone when they try to utilize it. However, with attribute-based access control model, uh, these access, enterprise access policies are more multi-dimensional in nature uh, and then this coupled with the dynamic authorization policy engine uh, enforces access decision based on policies driven by the attributes of subject, resource, action as well as the environmental context. So in simple terms, ABAC basically allows admins to implement more granular uh, policy-based access control using different combinations of attributes and uh, creates these conditions of access that can be either specific or broad as, as how the situation calls for and then also mitigates a lot of role explosion because it's going to be single access policies or let's say fewer access policies than more number of roles to control uh, or implement the same. 
Is ABAC going to replace road-based access control? ABAC was around before Zero Trust. In fact, ABAC was introduced to supplement uh, RBAC or road-based access control. Right? ABAC is no silver bullet. Um, as a matter of fact, we are advising our clients to apply ABAC in tandem with uh, RBAC. Uh, the key advantage of ABAC is that it can simplify the authorization management process across a multitude of applications primarily by externalizing these authorization policies of various applications into a central managed policy system. If you look at it in the past, we had applications were built on their own access control modules and then as we pointed out with the advancement of Zero Trust, it becomes very costly for us to scale these applications uh, to make them become more granular. Uh, hence, the, there is a need for ABAC to externalize these authorizations, which, which provides the ability to incorporate additional logic uh, for these fine-grained access controls uh, policies. By doing so, the applications will be now be able to perform these just-in-time access evaluations uh, that's managed centrally. Uh, eventually, the idea should be that you should apply both ABAC and RBAC together so that you could achieve some kind of dynamic. At the same time, you could also have and uh, reutilize your existing uh, access management model. Uh, and I think that's, that's going to be the solution for us to uh, pass through uh, Zero Trust and uh, take on these complex challenges. This concludes episode 3, how ZTA can be strengthened with ABAC. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for episode 4 where we will have more insights from a new expert.